Hi there, welcome back to Football Aranya. I'm Michael Statham and I'm joined by Xander Wilkinson, who is a very well-known scout for Dutch club Head & Vane. He's going to give us some expert information today into five Dutch talents who are playing in England. Aidan Braff is someone who we talk a lot about um, with Football Aranya, have spoken about in the past. He's 19 years old. He was with Ajax and PSV and went to Man City. Tell us a bit about him. In terms of pure natural ability, he is up there with arguably some of the best young players we have seen in the under 23s leagues in England. He is that exceptional. I mean, when he first came, he was so explosive with his pace and his directness. And you could see the comparisons that people were making at Man City with at the time Leroy Sane, where it was it was head down, it was direct, it was run at the play, it was beat at the play, it was straight on in on goal. And every time he got the ball, it was those sort of players, you, you're up on your seat thinking, oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? You were excited for him to get the ball. And then he's gone to Udinese on loan. It, it was playing more of a striker there, which was a bit disappointing because he is a left winger or possibly right winger, but best on the left for me. And he's picked up a bad injury, so he's coming back now. And it's going to be a case of he is such an exceptional talent mm. and so exciting. If everything comes together, he has a bit of luck without the injury. He gets into the right team. If someone just trusts him to play every week, he is going to guarantee you goals, he's going to guarantee you assists, he's going to get fans in the ground. Mm -hmm. He is just an electric and really charismatic player on the ball and you just love to watch him play. So you think he could be someone that does break through at Man City or perhaps somewhere else in the Premier League? If you'd have asked me maybe 12, 18 months ago, I'd have said he's got a real chance at Man City. He, it is, uh, his ability was just unquestionable. He was the star in the Man City team, which had a lot of big-name players in that were pushing through at the time. And I think, without knowing, it was a bit of his frustration. He was wanting more of a chance and wanting to be more involved, which didn't happen, which is why he's ended up moving out to Udinese and then coming back now. So I don't think it's going to be at Man City, but I think wherever he ends up, mm. they're going to have a heck of a player on their hands. <laughs> and maybe someone for the Dutch national team too, with our... Dutch football hat on. Let's talk next about Ian Martin, who is a left back uh, at Chelsea, is on loan though in the English leagues. He played for final Sparta and PSV in his youth. He's gone to Chelsea to try and further himself and make a career there. Something that strikes me about him is he's a left wing back, isn't he? He's very attacking minded. He's quite short, five foot six, um, but he's doing some brilliant things. He had a season with Charlton and now he's on loan with Coventry. Could even be recalled back to Chelsea. Is he, could he be that good? Well, that's the thing. I think one thing to praise Chelsea is their development plan with Martin has been exceptional. They've got everything spot on from the amount of time they gave him in the under-23s before deciding at the correct time to send him out on loan and sent him to Charlton, which was the perfect fix at the time. It was uh, Lee Boyer, who was the manager, who has an excellent reputation of working with a lot of these younger players. He'd worked with Conor Gallagher. He'd worked with uh, Christian Bielik beforehand. Quite a few who needed chance in game time to flourish, but not be taken out of the team if they had a bad performance. So he went to Charlton and he grew massively as a result and caught so, so much attention that he was always going to get another step up for this season, which has ended up being Coventry. Mm -hmm. And with Coventry's system of the wing-backs, it's allowed him to transition so easily because it, it's been carrying on in effect of what he was doing at, so well at Charlton. And it's allowed him to show his ability in the attacking transitions now and not so much have to worry about maybe some small defensive frailties in his game. He's still very mm. still strong defensively, but you would argue it's the weaker side of his game. But his pace and willingness to get involved in the attacking transitions is so much fun. And with Chelsea's current COVID and injury crisis, there is talks that, is he going to be recalled? He might be. It'd, be. it'd be exciting to see, but it's whether they think he'd be better off served spending the next six months at Coventry playing week in, week out, mm. or maybe half a dozen games in the Premier League you don't know I mean look at the the progression they had with Reese James is it going to be a case of another Reese James on the hands for him he's, he's an exceptional player I think he, he could get a chance in the senior team for Chelsea next year even if it's just as backup for the left wing back initially he's got a chance well that's exciting another player who's gone to England to develop and we talked a lot about English uh Dutch talents that have come in the past from the Netherlands and they're not done so well. And it's great that Martin might be someone who could, could break through. It's always about potential, isn't it? It's not a definite 
but he's someone who could impress at Chelsea maybe and then the Dutch national team in future looking for left backs. Next one, Lamar Bajada is an Aston Villa defender and a midfielder at the same time. He, he was with Feyenoord's uh, Youth Academy and then went to Villa. Villa looking at bringing in some players from abroad. They've done it with a few players in the past um, and the lower down in the English leagues and they're developing their own under-23 side at the moment, which looks very, very good for that level. Bojada, though, how good could he be? I think if there's anybody in this list who's got a real chance of breaking through into their current team and nailing down a position, mm. it's him. I'd never seen him before he came to the UK, but obviously I'd seen he was linked with every major club in the world. He was linked with Dortmunds, he was linked with Real Madrid's Man United. Every team, you name it, they were all watching him and they all wanted him. And then he's come to Aston Villa and you see him, you think, it's... He's so Rolls Royce is the only way to do, to explain him. He's he rarely puts a foot wrong. He's so calm. He's just smooth in the way he plays the ball out from the back. Or if he's in the midfield, he's so relaxed when he gains possession. He's quite he's quite dependable at the back, even when he's moved up in levels that maybe might have been a little bit too early for his development. He's gone into those settings and environments and not looked out of place, which is a massive compliment for anyone. Would you say he's ever the big standout in the game? Probably, probably not. But is the is he the one who you're always saying he's had a good game today? Yes, and mm. it's such a rare quality to find in a young player when inconsistencies are the big issue. He's he's so consistent, and yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, the Aston Villa youth setup at the moment is fantastic. They've they brought in Stephen Hopcroft from West Brom, who's brought in a lot of good young players at West Brom over his time there, and now he's done the same at Villa. I mean, he's, he brought in Louis Barry. He's brought, obviously, the Chukwameka brothers are doing well there, especially Carney, who's flying. And you've got even Swinkles at the back as well, who's come across from the Netherlands as well. So it's not just a case of the looking domestic, they're getting in these talents from abroad. And the won the FA Youth Cup last year as a result. And mm. Aston Villa is quickly becoming one of biggest youth development patches within the UK. So they're going to produce some amazing talents in the next couple of years. Very exciting for Villa fans to hear that. Um, I'm on myself, so <laughs> extra good news. Let's move on to another club though. And at Man United, there's Bjorn Hardley. A defender who came from Nak Breda initially, has gone to United. Tell us a bit about him. Yeah, he's, he's someone over the last 12 months who's probably caught the eye more so in the last six months, if anything. I mean, 12 months ago, I wasn't that high on him. I thought, oh, yeah, he's, he's not a bad defender, but he was always guaranteeing you one, two very basic errors. But of recent, he's just become a huge leader and almost taken it, the responsibility upon himself as other players have been called into the senior team at Man United. And he's become such a focal point for the Man United under-23s team. And his development is coming at such a rapid, rapid rate now that he's catching the eyes. He's always looking to be progressive with his passing out from the back. Don't get me wrong, his execution sometimes is a little bit off and he gives the ball away a little bit more than he should do, but the intentions are in the right way. It's just the execution you can you can get away with sometimes, especially as a youth player, because you're going to make those mistakes. It's the intentions that are the key part. And his intentions are right a lot of the time. He's got good pace. He's, he's really growing into his body physically now. And there's so much to like about him in his development. And because he's not maybe come from one of the traditionally big clubs in the Netherlands as well, you're starting to think, is the environment Man United the environment he needed yeah. for that development for him? And is, is he going to make it at Man United? I don't think so. Purely because of the money they can spend and they want something that's instantly ready now. Mm -hmm. But he's quickly becoming someone who's catching a lot of attention and could get a very nice move if given the right environment to grow in further. That's good news. That We want to see Dutch talents succeeding whatever club it is professionally and even if they don't make it at the club that they're at, at the moment for those youth teams um i think that it's nice that they can have that environment to sort of thrive in and, and get better in the last player on our list is mickey van sass goalkeeper who came from utrecht he's 17 now man city so they must have seen something in him to take him so young and for him to develop there how can you tell that a goalkeeper at such a young age is going to be so good? It's a tough one because generally speaking, the goalkeepers will peak later than the outfield players. And 
you normally see the goalkeepers get chances later on in the career or the first steps into the senior environment might be at a very, very low level, but it's at, in the adult environment. So the example I, is, I know is a lot of players in the under 23s level have loans into the non-league system in the UK purely because from a physical perspective, they're getting exposed and they're not ready for it. They make a lot of errors, but they grow so much from that without it meaning a lot to those maybe in the football league. But, Van Sass has such an aura of calmness around him. He makes mistakes. That's what young goalkeepers do. If, if they weren't making mistakes, they would already be in a first team. So he does make a lot of mistakes, some that he shouldn't be making, yes. But whenever he plays, everyone around him is so calm. His communication is constant. He, he's not afraid to give it to, the, to his teammates. If they get something wrong, he will let them know. His distribution, though, is key. He's mm. so key to especially a lot of Man City's He's such a smooth, relaxed technique in the way that he distributes the ball, especially off the floor. And he's got a real understanding of when to inject tempo into yeah. quick transitions or when to slow it down and help his team settle on the pitch. But especially this season, as he's getting more game time in the under-23s and being the main first choice in the under-19s in the youth league, he's found an ability to pull out big saves at big moments. Mm. When they play, the under-19s play Club Bruges away, he made three or four in the first half that could have easily been three or four nil down and he shouldn't have had a chance of saving and he made some unbelievable saves and the same happened then uh, when he they played at home to PSG. He made two errors, you would say. The first one, yeah, you would say it's his error. The second one, you would just argue he could have done a bit better. But instantly after he made the mistakes, he pulled off big saves, which is a huge thing for this kid's got elite mentality to get rid of that mistake he's just made and instantly go and make a big, big save. Goalkeepers don't often come away with all the credits and this, that and the other unless they've won it in a penalty shootout or something like that. So the ability to shut everything out and be so key is a massive, massive thing to have as a goalkeeper, especially one so young. So it's a case of you've got to be impressed with how he could develop in the next five, six years. Excellent that there's, there's so many Dutch talents coming through. And Xander, thanks very much for your time to do this. If you're new to Football at Anya, do give us a like. Um, if you enjoyed it and you love our Football at Anya Dutch football content, then give it a like too and subscribe if you are new. We have also got a full interview with Xander, which you can watch on YouTube too, uh, where he talks about his scouting career. Go and check that out too. I'll leave a link to it um, on screen and in the description. Thanks everyone for watching. Leave down below in a comment who you think will be the biggest Dutch talent playing abroad in England.